All right, welcome everybody to the Agile New York City podcast. Today it's actually a video podcast and an audio podcast. Excellent. Excellent, right? Yeah. So uh, this is the next uh, evolution from audio to video. It's video. 2010, yes. right? Yeah. I'm here with Ken Schwaber. Welcome, Ken. Welcome to the Hello. podcast. Thank you. Um, we have Ken on the 3rd of November uh, visiting New York for two reasons. We have him for a talk he will be giving to us. Uh, on the night of the third, uh, which is called State of Scrum. Yes. So he will give us an update on um, what the State of Scrum will be in this talk. He will have one hour. Um, and uh, we will be meeting at uh, LimeWire at 6.30 in New York City. Excellent. The second part, uh, why you're visiting New York, is uh, you will be delivering a professional Scrum Master training course uh, the third and the fourth of November. Yes, so we'll be giving the talk to the everyone night of the third. Yes, okay. after the first day of training, yes. uh, you are presenting to uh, Agile in New York City. Excellent. I do want to use this opportunity here on the video just to talk a little bit about um, where Scrum is, about your talk. Perhaps you can just give uh, our listeners and watchers a few pointers on what do you think the state of Scrum is. That is very topical because as, as many of you are aware, the Agile Manifesto was published back in February of 2001. And I'm starting to see a lot of activity of people saying, well, is this now something we should be celebrating or is this something we should be warning or and did we do something good and did we do something bad? Um, Scrum itself is, is one of the um, agile techniques or a technique for becoming agile. And I am um, very pleased with it. I, I am delighted with the progress that we have to date. Um, we have, and it's, it's becoming a standard um, set of wording for mm -hmm for iterative incremental for Agile. Um, so I'm delighted with that because it's replacing Waterfall. That's right. Which is our intention for the Agile Manifesto is to replace Waterfall. Yeah. Um, so I've seen um, the shift from, from Waterfall to Agile with Scrum being the primary technique for managing the Agile projects and for scaling with an organization. Mm -hmm. um, we of course have our challenges. Um, we have 20, 25 years of using Waterfall and just saying Scrum and Sprint and Chicken and Pig does right. not undo them. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is not something that's going to be undone in two years. This is something that I think we have the rest of our lifetime to work on. Yeah. But you mentioned the Agile Manifesto. You mentioned it was almost uh, 10 years ago at this yeah. point. Um, you mentioned you are, uh, let's call it, happy with the, the, the things, how they're progressing. It's not a reason to mourn at this point. No. No, we, we actually had no idea that the manifesto would occur. We just were very upset with Waterfall mm -hmm. and what it was doing to our profession, and we also were fearful that ROP, Rational Effect Process, would become popular because we saw it as a, another instantiation of Waterfall. Mm -hmm. And so when we got together, we found that we had many things that we shared in common, and we started um, elaborating on those and got a manifesto. Mm -hmm. I am delighted Waterfall is in um, not the sentence anymore, it's in retreat. Mm -hmm. um, even in COBOL shops maintaining legacy software, we're starting to use um, Scrum and the Agile techniques. Now, when we did the Agile Manifesto, uh, Mark Fowler suggested we not call it Agile. He said it sounds too uh, nice. Okay. He said everyone's going to be running around saying, we're Agile, because it <laughs> sounds good. Well, everyone, of course, wants to be Agile. He said, we should call it quack and poof or something like that. <laughs> and only the <laughs> serious assurance would say, I'm quack and poof. Yeah. So right. a, new, a new word, introducing a new word into the society. Yes. Yes. And that would be good or tragic, not sure. Mm -hmm. Like the word sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so um, unfortunately, that's one of the things we do see is it's also becoming a fad mm -hmm. um, for the non-serious. That's right. I think that's a, I think that's from my perspective, that's a common trend you uh, observe that uh, a yeah. lot of uh, teams are being labeled agile yeah. without really looking behind the chicken egg and chicken pig and chicken uh, the jokes uh, yeah. you see uh, in, in all these training courses. And, um, and that, that I believe is tragic. That is uh, in some respect tra tragic, although I have to say very often I'm just happy that uh, companies start with a dialogue, start with a conversation about agile. Isn't that a positive thing? That that is even if they're not implementing thing. immediately with 100% off um, Agile frameworks, but um, at least it, it's, just, it's a good thing. They're starting with a dialogue yep. um, about it, right? Something has started, so waterfalls has been eroded. Um, those are good things. That's, these are good things. That is uh, that's fantastic. So, 
Um, we also see some metrics uh, in our industry, and I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some metrics. Um, very important, and I agree with your statement earlier when you said uh, waterfall is in decline. Um, they are, there is, I think, a broad range of metrics, not only coming from scrum coaches and scrum trainers that this is the case. Yeah. But there's also uh, metrics out there. Um, we had recently, we had a talk given at Agile in New York City where um, there are stats out there where iterative incremental development is almost on the same level as agile development or agile project management. Mm -hmm. So you would say iterative incremental development has the same benefits at the end when you look at the end of the project as an agile project. So why go in the extra mile? Why am I starting empowering my teams? And I'm a devil's advocate. <laughs> Interesting flip. You are not a devil's advocate. You're actually a good person. Um, a lot of companies that want to do something different, want to do agile, want to do better incremental, uh, much to my surprise, they don't need Scrum, but they use it because it's a common set of vocabulary, um, common set of expectations, a way of thinking that they can scale throughout the organization. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a, a way of thinking. So it's their, their attempt to implement iterative incremental, um, self-organizing teams, cross-functional teams, with the work. So Scrum itself is not important. It's, it's you know very, very small. It's a tool. It's not a solution. Mm -hmm. And um, the only reason I would recommend it is for the reason that these people do that, which is it allows you not to have to think through the process, but to actually get at solving the problems. Mm -hmm. Now, an issue that the idea of iterative incremental has, that um, Scrum has, because Scrum is iterative incremental, all agile processes are, right. is that very, very few, maybe 50% of all companies that are saying they're agile, are actually doing iterative incremental. Mm -hmm. That is, iterative incremental implies that the end of every iteration, you have a done increment, which can be, which is transparent and can be inspected and someone can do something about it. Very few organizations, no matter what words they're saying, are doing that. So I don't think the issue is whether you call it iterative incremental or scrum or anything you want. I think the issue is the engineering precision and discipline, the correlation with the product people and the teams to do the actual work. Mm -hmm. Is this perhaps a is this perhaps a call to ask for protecting and delivering within time boxes? I think so. Yeah. I mean, if if you don't, you don't have anything. Yeah. Um, even waterfall, the classic thing was ninety percent done. We're done. We're done. And then you do stabilization for seven months. Yes. We're finding the same habits in the iterative incremental, where at the end of the iteration they're done, but you find you have all this undone work. They didn't refactor. They didn't have automated test arms as they did. You know. Yeah. So we're really driving now at the en underlying engineering issues, which, which became such a mess during waterfall mm -hmm. years. Uh, Ken, I'm, I definitely I can't wait for your for your talk on the third of November at night and hear more about um, all your findings in the industry. At this point, and just as a, at the end of our video podcast, yes. here, what I would like to do is <laughs> what I would like to do is I would actually try to find out from you not only looking back at the last ten years of the Agile Manifesto, perhaps even longer than that, because Chrome is older in, uh, than the Agile Manifesto. Yes, is there anything? Anything in the last in the in the last twenty years of, of Scrum, um, when you just reflect and you had the opportunity to change anything in the last twenty years, for the uh, changing anything, taking anything away, uh, how you implemented Scrum, how you rolled out Scrum into the world, um, the speed Scrum became popular, all these things uh, reflecting. Is there anything um, you would say you would have done differently? I don't know how I would have done them differently. And there's certainly things that they contributed to where we are and the goodness of where we are. Um, I do regret the um, devaluation of the word certification mm -hmm. that's occurred. Um, I do regret um, some of the proprietary um, that some organizations have toward um, things they do. Mm -hmm. And I certainly contributed to that. Um, but by and large, unfortunately, there's nothing perfect and there's nothing terrible, mm. you get some good and some bad with anything you do. Mm. So there are some regrets that you have, but not certain how I would have done it differently. Okay. Do you think it would be a good idea to have all the team members from the HR Manifesto meet again? 
and I, in retrospect. I would love to do it, and I think we ought to have a mud wrestling match. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Ken. You're We're waiting for the 3rd of November. Thank you so much.